October 6, 2020. Thanks for joining me for another Outlaw Pulpit, and I'm so glad you're able to join me this week. You know, this is the third one that I've done in the series so far, and I am so grateful for the uh, feedback, both good and bad. I'm, uh, I like to hear what people like about the show. I like to hear what people, um, you know, might not necessarily like about it. And, you know, either way, it's okay. It's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Uh, this whole podcast is my opinion, um, educated in a lot of areas, but uh, at the same time, uh, just something that uh, I want to put out there and shoot straight. As I tell people from the church that I pastor, um, I address topics on here that I might ease up a little bit on in the pulpit, uh, but here in my office at home in an undisclosed bunker, um, I am uh, uh, shooting straight with you. This week, I want to talk about churches, Christians, and masks. <laughs> okay, how appropriate that it's October and we are uh, dealing with Halloween and having to wear masks. So um, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, in the church I pastor, I've been a part of this church. I, I've been in uh, Wapaka, Wisconsin at Radiant Fellowship Church. If you want to check it out, here's the webpage right here on the screen. Um, I've been a part of this church for over 15 years. 15 years as the pastor since we officially relaunched in 2005. Um, I came and said, yes, I'll be a part of the church in, at the very tail end of 2003. Uh, and from 2003 till August 2005, I was the youth pastor. And then things went kaplooey um, and I became the senior pastor, lead pastor, whatever if you're from a... a um, a traditional church or a, an emerging church or whatever the case may be, whatever title you want to give me, that's fine. Bob is fine. Um, so we, we uh, ended up last week saying, okay, we, we got we to gotta wear masks. Um, up until this time, we provided masks. We uh, put out hand sanitizer, all that stuff. Some people wore masks, and I was totally fine with that. I never preached a message on why you shouldn't wear masks or you have lack of faith if you wear a mask or um, things like that because quite honestly, it's a mask, <laughs> okay? Um, people have been hitting me up like, well, statistically, um, masks prove that they just don't uh, protect against everything and I'm like, I don't care if, if it means making other people happy and maybe protects myself or somebody else. I'll throw one on when I pick up a gallon of milk from the store. It's all good. It's a it's a paper mask. It's not a big deal. My wife has to wear one 12 hours every day at work. So I think I can wear it for a little bit when I go into the local grocery and pick up some Twizzlers. All right. So here's the deal. <laughs> I want to talk about masks because it, it is such a hot topic. At least here in the United States, um, the unspoken, I guess you could say the spoken thing is, is that uh, if you wear a mask, you're a liberal, you're a Democrat. If you don't wear a mask, you're a Democrat. Okay, if you wear a mask part-time, depending on which way the wind is blowing, you're maybe a libertarian um, or a moderate at best. And so, I, you know, one of the things that I, I put out there recently on Facebook is that I make no qualms about it. Um, even in my own church, I'm one of the most straight-shooting people somebody's going to ever meet. Um, during our annual business meetings, I call them an annual BM. Um, during our annual business meetings, um, I, I, I literally start off with talking about the church, how everything's going. And then when we get to the uh, numbers, I tell the church exactly how much I make. Okay. I don't need people going through the, the, the numbers saying, okay, because pastor's salaries are wonky. They can uh, claim certain things, can't claim, some things are taxable and stuff like that. So I just come right out and say, this is what I make, okay? I've never been a part of a church that did that, but I'm not afraid to do it because, quite honestly, in the church setting, uh, the people that give help fund me, okay? Um, I, I receive a check from the church. And so I'm also not afraid to say I'm a Republican. <laughs> if this was a surprise to you, uh, <laughs> you need to be a little more inquisitive or read between the lines. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pro-life. I'm a pastor of an assembly of God church. Um, I know shocker, right? Uh, he's a, he's a Republican, but here's the deal. Um, I don't consider myself a jerk about politics. I don't, uh, um, say, oh no, you're a Democrat. I can't, you know, I'm going to try to sway you, whatever. 
Um, the fact of the matter is I have a lot of Democrat friends and I would absolutely go out for ice cream with them or go out for a dinner with them and enjoy our friendship. Um, given the chance to meet a former president I, or the president, I would absolutely jump at the chance. Why? It's the president. I mean, what an honor to shake hands with the uh, leader of the of, of a powerful country like the United States. So, And, and that's the way I look at it. I got to respect the office. And so face masks, um, what's the role of a Christian? What's the role of Christians and face masks? I mean, I hate them. <laughs> There's just no other way to put it. I absolutely hate face masks. Um, I, I never thought, I never dreamed of the day that uh, I would look like or the people I, in our city, state, country would look like those in other countries that have to wear the face masks uh, due to the uh, pollution and everything. But here we are. Um, we are doing it. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I, at our church, it, we didn't really make a big deal of it. But once grocery stores and places of business started to be, say it's mandatory, you have to wear one into our, into our businesses, I went ahead and did it. Um, the fact of the matter is, um, is that my wife is a nurse. And so uh, I'll be honest with you, back in March, when all this was starting to fire up and actually in February went on a cruise um, and this was all the talk on the cruise and they were making a big deal out of sanitizing, um, hand sanitizing, washing your hands, all of that stuff. Nobody wore face masks. <clears throat> and I thought it was kind of a farce, to be honest with you. Um, uh, but when we got back from that trip, I started to hear more and more news. Now, we ended up going to a place called the Mall of America. It's in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, actually Bloomington, which is the greater Minneapolis area. And this was a week before everything was hard shut down. And we were kind of naive on it. It was uh, spring break for the kids. And I got three kids that are under that are not teenagers that are younger. Uh, so we went to the Mall of America and this place is normally packed. I mean, it's it's a huge place. They have a actual um roller coasters and everything in the middle of it and when we got there I, I looked down the the stretches of the mall and you could count maybe four or five people walking around well that night I remember playing I remember this very well the kids were on a roller coaster the SpongeBob SquarePants bikini bottom plunge <laughs> it's where it goes three stories up into the rafters of the um of the mall and then it just drops you it goes through loops and everything um but i got a, a note from an email from the kids school saying school is canceled and that's when i thought okay something big is going on here still kind of thought it was a farce like come on but the fact is is that nowadays when the stores began to make everything uh, mandated that you got to wear masks and there's still a lot of people that don't um there was going to be this surge in March or April that was going to debilitate our area, a lot of areas. That never happened. And so we just kind of coasted along, and all of a sudden, uh, end of September is hit, October is hit, and the, the hospital my wife is a supervisor at, it is packed. Um, they've had to move adults into the pediatric unit because in the adult area, it's jammed with COVID patients. And so this thing is hit and, you know, I, I started to wrestle with this, like, okay, so where do I stand on masks? And um, then I started reading uh, some updates from a doctor that my wife works with. And it began to hit me like, you know what, Bob, it's a mask. Get over yourself. <laughs> I thought to myself, never, you know, I, 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 I had to put aside, well, is this political? Is this not political? Uh, you know, how are people going to view me? Uh, all of that stuff. It's a cloth mask. It's a paper mask that you put on when you go into a store and when you come out, you can take it off. You don't have to wear it in a car by yourself or anything like that. And so, you know, why, why did I want to talk about that today? Because I think there's a lot of... Um, different stances in Christianity regarding the mask. Um, and I, if I step on toes, it, oh, well, that's, that's just how it goes. But my father's elderly. Okay. He's 80, going to be 81 in January. And I can tell in his voice <clears throat> that he's thankful when I do my part to stay healthy so that he can keep hanging out with my family. You see, he's, he moved up from Milwaukee to, uh, last year. 
He lives about six blocks from my house and his only source of social, uh, being social is coming to church or with my family and occasionally my brother's family. And when he sees that I wear a mask in the stores and all of that stuff, it gives him a peace of mind. And so am I going to argue with him that I'm not wearing a mask? No, it's a mask. (laughs) I have have bigger things to worry about if I'm going to argue about something. You know, many people have great immunity systems. They really do. And there are a lot of people that don't. So for my wife, if she got COVID, she'd be fine. Okay. Um, the doctor she works with, one of them got COVID. She's fine. She uh, still has some lingering effects respiratory wise, but she's fine. She's not contagious anymore. But I have a lot of friends that quite honestly smoke and smoke a lot. And they're a little more, you know, middle, mid age. And quite honestly, if they ended up getting COVID, that could be a very difficult situation for them. I promise you, if my dad got COVID, um, it would be a very difficult situation for him because he has other ailments that are underlying. And I don't want him to be a statistic. So what do I do? I put a mask on. What do I do at church? I put a mask on. When it was time for me to preach, I take it off. But that's because I'm up on stage. I'm more than six foot away from people and we're all distanced. And so the mask thing, you know, we can make it uh, very much a a political statement, but at the same time, I think we need to simplify it a little bit. <clears throat> I can reach out to my wife. I can reach out to doctors that I know through my wife that can give me all of the stats. They can give me everything I need to know. All I need to know is that, hey, you know what? Hospitals are full right now. People are getting COVID. And so I'm not going to follow memes. I'm not going to follow little catchy statements on Facebook or anything like that because um, I don't need to take COVID advice from a plumber. I don't need to take COVID advice from an electrician, all right? And I realize that could sound a little heartless, a little mean, but at the same time, I wouldn't expect a cancer patient to take advice from me because I'm a pastor, not an oncologist, nor do I pretend to be one on TV, okay? And so I think what we need to do is settle down on this. If if wearing a mask helps even a little bit, put the mask on, Okay. When you go into the store, when you go into Kroger, when you go into Pick and Save, if you're down south, you go into Publix, whatever the case may be, do your part. I mean, yeah, there's particles that can come out. I totally get that and all that stuff. But maybe, just maybe, it might catch a random particle and will prevent you from getting sick. And you'll prevent somebody else from getting sick. And so that's why this rant was due. We'll get through this, but let's all do our part. Um... You know, this is an aggressive bug. It is very catchy. It is very contagious. And so, you know, the fact is, you know, and this is what I love about church life. You can disagree with me. I'm totally okay with that. In fact, I, I those kind of conversations are best around a cup of coffee in a cafe and we can just talk. Imagine that as human beings just enjoying conversation. But the fact is, is that my opinion is my opinion. Your opinion is your opinion. Listen. I respect you for that. All right, time for... I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. Okay, so the thing about Halloween is that a lot of churches struggle with this time of year. We call it harvest party. We call it fall parties. We do all sorts of things that in order to um, pacify the fundamentalists that have a difficult time with Halloween. Now, here's the deal. Halloween, I realize this is a hot topic button for Christians. I mean, I worked at a Christian bookstore and we used to sell the pamphlets, The Dark Side of Halloween by Mike Warnke. Well, that that whole situation with that guy ended up going south. But there are some dark roots to Halloween. Let's just be honest. But regarding churches, regarding Christians, I don't think we ought to be like an ostrich that sticks its head in the sand and says, it's not happening. We're not doing this. It's not going to go on. Blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you what I'm doing with our church. One of the things we have always enjoyed doing is being a positive note for this time of year when the kids go out and trick or treat. And so we do something called a candy carnival. The kids can come by, they can play games, earn candy. We give away a bike. And all of that. Well, this year, I think our city is going to cancel trick-or-treating. And so what we are going to do is do two socially distanced 
ways of distributing candy to kids. The first thing we're going to do is a candy cannon. All right. So this is a device that's built out of PVC pipes and fittings and things like that hooked up to a compressor. It has an electronic uh, detonation button and it literally shoots candy 100 feet into the air. Tootsie rolls, gumdrops, uh, gobstoppers, whatever you want to put in there. And the kids can just go around and pick up the candy in the yard and off they go. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is a candy shoot. Um, we're going to pick up some orange lights, wrap a tube, a uh, PVC tube, and it's going to go from the top of our church to the to the ground. And we're literally going to put blow pops and Tootsie Rolls and whatever in there and send it down. We'll have the kid put the bag at the bottom of the chute. We'll send the candy down and just be kind of fun. Um you know, the fact of the matter is, is that we can say it's evil, it's no good, it's lousy, but to kids, it's like, I just, I get a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> and so we got to look at it like that and say, okay, God, check my heart. Um, if I make it something that it shouldn't be, I need to check myself on that. But the fact of the matter is, these kids are out, families are out right now, and they're walking past the church. Why not be a light to our community? And so that's what we're going to do. So I, I challenge you Christians with that. You know, when Halloween comes, don't stick your head in the sand and say, it's not happening, not going to be part of this evil day because it has everything to do with Satan. You know, make the most of it. Make the most of it. Show the love of Christ in a practical way. And I guarantee you, all the years that we've done candy carnival in the past with the bounce houses, the candy giveaways, the bike giveaway, people remember that. And they remember that church, those Christians that showed the love of God in a tangible way. And I guarantee you that if you do something like that or just start something at your church as well, people are going to remember that in your community. So, hey, thanks for joining me for another Outlaw Pulpit. And I uh, look forward to being with you again next Wednesday. Have a good day.